Hey guys, I'm Ich, and here's the thing. I know how intimidating it can be to be filming at sporting events by yourself. There's a lot going on, a lot of grounds to cover, and there's only one of you. So today, in this sports videography tutorial, I'm gonna teach you three filming hacks I use all the time that will make you much more efficient when filming sports. Okay, so let's not waste any time and go straight into it. My first tip for you guys is to always go in with a plan. Really take the time to plan this thing out so that you know exactly what you need to do once you get there. This might sound like extra work, but actually it's quite the opposite. Shooting with a plan will prevent you from wasting precious time and energy on unnecessary things. Now, a good plan should always include a shot list. A shot list is a very effective way to make sure you get all the content you'll need later on for your edit. For example, on my shot list, there's usually a lot of cutaway content like three different close-up shots of feet running, one establishing shot of the stadium or arena, five different crowd shots, two close-up shots of a referee, and so on. These are all items that you can tick off your list before, during, and after the game. The point is to be as efficient as you can with your time. So making a list like this will keep you on track and also make you accountable. Having a plan also includes getting there early so you have time to figure out and test the best camera positions available. Another reason to be there early is to film a few establishing shots and cutaways before the game even starts. By the way, if you're not exactly sure what I mean by establishing shots and cutaways, I strongly suggest you watch one of my previous videos where I explain it all very clearly. So I'll put the link in the description below. All right, so let's move on. My next sports filming hack is to use stock footage. I bet you didn't see that one coming. It's not really a filming hack as much as it's a hack that will save you a lot of time and allow you to spend that time on things that really matter. Again, efficiency. Stock footage is not very common in sports videography because generic shots of people playing sports are not gonna be very helpful with your game coverage. But stock footage can come in very handy when it comes to cutaways. Especially time lapses, aerial shots, and city landscapes. They can be a great way to add production value to your videos for a reasonable price and no effort at all. Take this video for example, which starts in a pretty basic way. I'm not gonna play the whole thing, but let's start the same video again, but this time with the addition of a few stock footage clips in the intro. Straight away, the video feels much more professional. Now, you might think that stock footage is expensive. And yes, if you're paying clip by clip, it can be. But the way around that is to use a website that offers an unlimited subscription plan. For example, I use Pro Video Factory. It's a stock footage website that offers, at the moment, an HD package with unlimited downloads for $150 a year which is basically the price of only three clips on any other website. And for a bit more money, you can upgrade your subscription to the 4K package, which again comes with unlimited downloads, but this time in 4K. Full disclosure, Pro Video Factory didn't pay me to do this video, but they did send me an affiliate link, which I'll put in the description below. That means that if you buy a subscription from them, I would greatly appreciate if you did it using the link below, because that would allow me to finally start making a little bit of money from this channel by earning a small commission. But yeah, I wouldn't recommend Pro Video Factory if I didn't really like him. And as I said before, there's a sale on at the moment and you can get a one year subscription for the same price as what you would pay for like three clips. So if you intend to use a bit of stock footage in your next video, it's kind of a no brainer. Anyway, moving on. My last sports filming hack is to play with your filming perspective. In previous videos, I've talked a lot already about shot variety, how you should try to move around and not film the whole game from the same position, especially if you're filming a highlight reel. But let's say that you're stuck in one position for some reason. 
or even if you're not, you just want to make the most of that spot before you move somewhere else. There's a way to get a lot of different shots from the same camera position. And the way to do that is to change your perspective or point of view. Typically, when you're filming amateur sports, you're doing it pretty front on from somewhere around the boundary. From that same position, you can get awesome results by literally putting your camera on the ground and just tilting it up a little bit so that it sits in an upward angle. The best way I found to achieve that without a fancy little tripod is to use my phone or a book or a landscape, anything I can just lean my camera on to get that perfect angle. Not only does this give you a great wide shot when the action is far away, but it also gives you great cutaway material when the players run past your camera. Feed close-up shots are very useful between plays. And that's why they're on my shot list. So that's it for my three sports filming hacks. I hope you found them somewhat helpful and that you'll put them to good use. Also, let me know in the comments if you have hacks of your own that you think I should have included in this video. Otherwise, don't forget to subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.